Alright, what's up guys? It's your boy LB Shane and welcome back to another episode of the County Roads Ride Along. I got my buddy Doug Johnson over here with me today. Hey. And uh, if you're liking what you're seeing, make sure and subscribe, give us a thumbs up, and click that little bell over there so you know when we're putting new stuff out. It's real county road, huh? Yeah, man, this is real <laughs> county road right here. See, man, I grew up on these kind of roads. I tell everybody my family thinks Duke's a Hazard is a documentary. <laughs> I had been in town for a little while and I thought maybe I wanted a record deal and I was trying to go around and meet some people and uh, a <laughs> friend of ours introduced me to you and uh, first day I go up in your office and I'm so excited because I'm about to get to meet the guy that wrote three wooden crosses. Man, I'm pumped. I go in to where he was working and I sit down across the desk from you. We're sitting there just talking for a minute, and I'm thinking I'm about to just start in on some small talk. He just looked at me and said, well, you going to play me any songs or what? <laughs> That's what you were there for, right? I was like, oh, no, he's serious. Little did I know. <laughs> but you were the first person actually in Nashville that had ever written a hit song or had anything going on in, in the industry that took the time to sit in a room with me. And I, oh, I, man, I didn't realize that. I, I love that. I really Love appreciate that. that, man. It means a lot to me. I'm glad it was you because now we've we've seen some success together now. That's but, right. But I'd like to know, you know, we talked a little bit about how you ended up, you know, getting into music. But, like, where did it start when you was a kid? What? what? My, my daddy was, I call him a windshield wiper piano player. Uh-huh. And I grew up where if you came over to eat, if somebody's getting married, if somebody's getting buried, if there was a University of Georgia football game on TV, we were by God going to get around the piano and sing songs. And uh, I grew up doing that. They just thought it was the most natural thing in the world. And I just got, I just, and he was one of those players that he could just dive at the piano. You know, I never could do that on a guitar or anything. But he could just dive at the piano and, and just go at it. And I fell in love with it. I saw what it did to people. I saw how poor people together. I, lucky enough, too, he loved great songs. And so I always, he always, you know, was playing the best songs, classics, new songs on the radio. He just, you know, it's a great way to grow up. Went to the University of Georgia, I mean, uh, Georgia State University in Atlanta, a uh, music business program, and some real inspiring teachers. Uh, got a chance to, got an internship at the Lowry Group. Bill Lowry was a famous publisher. Mm -hmm. uh, and I had actually, when I was 16 and a half, had had a record deal as a duo. Really? I was lead singer of a duo. Yeah, and Mike Curb signed me. He was running MGM Records. When you were 16? When I was 16 and a half, yeah. And it took me about six months to realize I love everything about my singing except the way my voice sounds, and I absolutely <laughs> hate it. <laughs> I was like, man, I am not going to torture myself and hate myself the rest of my life. And so no, thankfully nothing ever happened, but I, I fell in love with it. So you know what I want to do is I want to I want to figure out how to help people who I love to the sound they make, a la people like you. Well, I appreciate when that. When you get up there and sing high up there where the money is. You know, on the end of the limb with <laughs> yeah, that last leaf. Exactly. <laughs> well, that's cool, man. So you, you started, you also did some like recording stuff where you started your well, engineering over Well, there, I was right? doing the internship. They were redoing the studio. Every job I've ever had, uh, somebody said, you know how to do so-and-so? And I went, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I had to go figure out how to do it. So I was, uh, yeah. I'd get off, you know, I was living in Atlanta by myself. I was working, doing that internship. I was playing gigs to not starve to death. And uh, I'd pick up a hammer and help him in the studio. So about three or four months later, they said, uh, you know how to engineer? I went, yeah. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. I did have a four-track recorder at home, so I knew a little bit. No, I always uh, looked at it like this. There was always somebody that did it first. That's right. So if somebody did it first and didn't know what they was doing, I'd figure it out. Well, I got lucky. The uh, the guy that big brothered me uh, uh, was a guy who uh, mixed Sweet Home Alabama. Oh man! He uh, all the Atlanta rhythm section stuff. Engineer. He, he beat me up though. He's like, man, that's the gosh awfulest sounding stuff I've ever heard in my life. But he tried, he would try to help me. But he was. He said that thing on two and four. What in the world is that noise? I said that's my snare drum sound. He said. You gotta work on your snare drums. So, <laughs> so uh, yeah, I started off as an engineer, and I, it was like a step ladder to, you know, to do more. Right down the road from here is where I was introduced to this area. My father-in-law built that cabin that we, you've been out yeah, there. Yeah, we, we, we rode a uh, sundance area. Yeah, we rode sundress. sundress. Yeah, sundress out there.
we are here at the cabin. <laughs> I love the cabin. In Greenford, Kentucky. One song in particular, the song that I was super excited the first time I was talking about when I got to come in and meet you at, at the label, um, I was like, this dude wrote Three Wooden Crosses. And man, I, I mean, that had to have been a life-changing song. And, you know, to have somebody like Randy Travis cut that song had to have been amazing. And then, I mean, you guys, what were you guys won all kinds of awards with that? I know you got song yeah, of the year, right? Wrote, wrote it with Kim Williams. Mm -hmm. We won about every song of the year award you could win for country song or gospel song or Christian gospel song, mm -hmm. and we were just blessed. And, and it was one of those things where uh, I started the song. Uh, I remember sitting at home and, and telling Lisa, "Hey, come over and check these people on this bus out." And like I told you before, if, if preacher and teacher hadn't rhymed, that song wouldn't funny <laughs> this. And uh, so I walk in next morning, I'm writing with Kim, I play him, play him uh, the verse, and he goes, you butthole, man. I go, what? He said, play me something I love that he already wrote. And I said, no, that's all I got. He said, I love you, man. <laughs> and uh, so we, we were going to actually just live with the idea and write the next day. And Kim was fumbling through uh, a book of hooks. And he said, man, I got this thing. It's not what you take, but what you leave behind. So we just rolled our sleeves up. And, uh, and then when we happened on that bridge, we both kind of teared up. And, the reason I actually have you on this series was because this is uh, a series about the songwriters who were a part of the County Roads EP. And one of my favorite songs off of that EP, I love them all, but mm -hmm. one of my absolute favorites is Sundress. Uh, me too, I love it. Which was written right across this wall. Right over there. Beside a bottle of whiskey. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> That was shrinking. It was shrinking, it was shrinking. <laughs> but I, I remember that night just being so frustrated uh, with that song. Cause we were doing this. You remember? We were, da, 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 da. What was God thinking when He made that child? All that pretty. Well, you came out with that leg. You came out with that intro. Well, that was after I got frustrated. I well, just started making the bottle shrink a little more. Well, and see, Adam and I are absolutely okay with you getting as frustrated as you need to be. <laughs> if it leads to something like that. I'm glad I got frustrated. Frustrate onward. But I, I had to. Uh, I had to chill out for a second. So that's when I started playing that little. You know thing on the, on guitar and, and Adam walked up behind me in my ear and said, what was God thinking when he made that child all oh, that pretty? And I thought, oh God, let's write that song. Mm -hmm. But man, uh, so I really think that that song though, or that weekend in particular, we'd known each other for a little while at that time, but I really think that weekend really uh, created something awesome between us as writers. And uh, since then, you know, Sundress, uh, Saturday Night Me, we, I still love I Will Run. I just kind of want to hear from you what it's like when you're stepping into a room with someone and, and what you're, like, what do you think about songwriting in regards to people like me that, you know, didn't have anything going on all the way up to the people you've been writing songs with for years and had success with? Uh, just what is songwriting to you? That's just, uh, you know, it's just, number one, I love getting in a room with young people who don't know they can't change the world with a song. And I'm sure not gonna tell them because it's possible to happen. And there's not a better way to get to know somebody than just say, hey man, let's write a song. And, and figuring out, uh, hopefully write something that is important, obviously to yourself and true to who you are, but that other people can relate to. And it's just, man, I believe great songs come from where the wind comes from. And there's just nothing more thrilling than to walk in, and sometimes even without an idea, and then walk away with a song that you really are. Th I feel blessed to be part of. I mean, I feel like, my God, I thank you, God. I, yeah. I, 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 I say a little prayer of thanks every time I'm part of it. When I walk in the room, I say, okay, God, you know me. I'm going to try to keep my head out of it. I'm going to try to listen for the wind. <laughs> listen for the wind. That's a good one, man. And, yeah, and a lot of wind comes out of you, so that's <laughs> easy. <laughs> I'm not going to contest it. Uh, I'm, I'm self-aware that it is what it is. There's, it's a lot, mostly hot wind. No, you asked you ask about walking. You know, just, man, just walk in. It's easy. Just walk in the room, get out your guitar, and bury your soul. What, what else is there to do? <laughs> it's easy, yeah. It's just three minutes. What's so hard yeah. about it, right? And it's fun to hear what somebody else, you know, what rings for them. It's like watching you when you get so excited about something, and you can tell when you there, you have a, a high level of frustration because you want it to be so true to who you are and as good as it can be. And you kind of beat yourself up 
which I'm okay with that if it helps us get a better song. <laughs> <laughs> You're okay with my No, song. but then when you get excited about it, man, and you just, you know who you are and you know what you want to say and you know what you won't say. And it just getting on that train, man. And when it starts moving sometimes and that train just takes over. And sometimes it's feeling like just holding on and it's just, it's magic. It's absolutely magic. It's hard work. What I appreciate the most about what you're saying about songwriting though, yeah. I think that I've gravitated towards uh, a lot of writers that are that I'm writing with often now is they love to fight it out with me and find the authenticity in the songs t to who well, I am. That's a, that's a thing of respect. It's not them being right, but they they you you know you you fight yourself and and you fight for the song and for it to be true to you. And you don't. As I've heard you say it several times. You don't want to waste somebody else's time if they're coming to write a song that hopefully you're interested in singing. If you know you're not going. Yeah, because I feel like I've know, let yeah. you down as a writer in the room if if I let if I go on and just say, oh, okay. And there's so many people that do that. Just get there's so, there's song. so many writers that write with other artists and just say, oh yeah, whatever you say is perfect. And, and I've been both now. I've mm -hmm. been a writer that's right that's written with artists, and now I've been an artist in the room with the writers trying to write for my own stuff. And I have to say that the biggest thing I've learned from that is that when you see an artist in the room get excited, I mean truly, genuinely excited. There's nothing like it. Yeah, go with them. Yeah, Let it roll. Like it. But, that, but that's uh, what makes you a great artist, man. I don't know about great. We're working on it. It's working we on it. We might get there yeah, one day. Don't you know who I want to be one day? <laughs> <laughs> no, man. I appreciate you, Doug. Everything you do, everything you've done for me. And uh, I'm so glad, so glad. You have no idea how much I appreciate you being a part of this project. And back uh, at you, to see other songs coming down the line that yep. are going to be in further yep. projects. To know that the first dude that I sit in a room with in Nashville that ever had anything going on gave me a chance has, you know, at this point, three songs coming down the pipeline for um that's just awesome man i love it buddy. so i appreciate you buddy, thank you man. i love you brother you too i love thank you, you for coming out here <laughs> what's up guys appreciate y'all hopping in for another episode of the county roads ride along and hanging out with me and my buddy doug johnson make sure if you're liking what you're seeing to give us a thumbs up subscribe and hit that little bell over there so you know when we put new videos out take care Here's your